Hey guys, it's Ben and Jody Hughes from Pour It Out Ministries. G'day. We are so excited to be with you for the Australian Prophetic Summit. And uh, we just want to say a massive g'day. We're in Texas right now, so g'day y'all from the other side of the world. And even though physically we're over here, our hearts are so with you. We wish we could be in the room. I know many of you aren't in the room, but <laughs> to those of you who are and wherever you're watching, we just want to say yeah. a big hello. We love you and it's so good to be with you. Yeah, and a very special hello and our love to Pastor Catherine and Tom. We love you guys. We miss you. To all our Aussie prophetic friends, like Ben said, we love you guys. We miss you. And i got to say this, blessing stronger than cursing. And we bless you, our prophetic friends. Amen. We Come just on. bless you. We bless your voices and we bless this season. Yeah. Now, hey, what a crazy season. I mean, it's crazy in every single way. And uh, before we get into just kind of sharing a little bit about 2021 and what God is doing and saying right now, you know, we just want to say 2020 for all of its craziness, for all of the obvious challenges and difficulties, it was an amazing year for the kingdom of God. And, you know, for ourselves, we had the great privilege of working closely with God TV through the year last year. And we, we had 40 weeks in a row. It just turned out that way. It was exactly 40 weeks until right before um, New Year's Eve this year uh, that we were able to do a, a broadcast with God TV. And I want to tell you, every single week, we saw people coming to Jesus from literally all around the world. And not only that, there were so many miracles. There was instant deliverance happening. And not only were we doing these broadcasts, but we also got to travel here in America. And uh, we still had, I think it was 140 travel days. We crossed 20 states, 20 something states in America. I'm telling you all of that to say this, that everywhere we went, we found so much hunger for God. We found hunger for salvation. I mean, I remember one of the meetings we were in just in the last kind of quarter of the year, um, Jody was up there and she was doing what she does and she's prophesying and she's preaching and she's got her, her stomp on, you know, and, and the glory came so strong into the room. People were literally getting up out of their seats. This was on a Sunday morning. People were getting up out of their seats yeah. and coming down, throwing themselves on the stairs at the front of the stage, weeping, mm -hmm. crying out to God getting saved. Yeah. And this was not just a one-off random event. This became more and more common. And we've only seen increase of that through September, October, November, December, and right, right up. And so I want to say this before we even start to go into 2021, and I know we're a couple weeks in now, but God is moving yeah. and things are only accelerating. And what begun in 2020 is going to come to just a full-blown raging fire of his presence in 2021. Yeah. And so we're both going to share a little bit and uh, and I'm going to go first, but do, do you want to say anything else before I... I think keep going. All right. So <laughs> here's what I saw in the few days leading up to New Year's Eve. Um, I began to have this vision in my spirit of this warrior. Yeah. And what I saw was like this old time kind of, um, you know, uh, just that old time warrior. What am I trying to think of? Um, you know, even from these uh, like gladiator, that style of warrior, that's what I'm trying to think of. And I saw this warrior, which I knew was us, was the church, the bride of Christ. I saw this warrior bend down and just begin to tighten up the bootstraps, just to really tighten those bootstraps and get everything tight and then stand up. And just like you might see in a movie like Lord of the Rings or something like that, this preparation for battle, the bootstraps were tight. They, they picked up the, uh, did up all of the other armor. They picked up the shield. The sword was being sharpened. And then I saw this steely eyed determination and then this running to the battle this running to the battle. And I want to tell you this, you know, there is a, we are in the season right now where it is time to run to the battle. And the important thing is, is that this warrior did not have any doubt. There was no second questioning what the call was. It, this is a call to war and there is a determination knowing whose we are and who we're fighting for and where we're <laughs> fighting from, right? That we are going to win this battle. But this is the thing that it was time to run to war. There was no shrinking back. There was no second guessing. There was no hesitation. There was no questioning. Do I have what it takes? Do I have what it needs? No. 
No, this is the time to run to the battle. And it's really important when we talk about warfare kind of language, you know, that we really clarify what it is that we're actually fighting. What is the war all about? And, you know, the Lord's had this phrase in my spirit all through last year, but it especially applies even now as things are heating up and we run into 2021. We're not fighting against the world, friends. We are not fighting against the world. We're fighting for the world. We are fighting for the world. And Luke chapter four, Jesus comes out of the wilderness. Right. He's just kicked the devil's butt all over that wilderness. Right. He's just been decreeing the word of God over him, that sword of the spirit. And the devil says this. and He's like, wow, whack, whack him in the side of the head with the word. Right. This is what he's been doing. So he, then he comes out of the wilderness and the power of the Holy Spirit in Luke chapter four. And he walks into the temple. And he picks up, uh, he picks up Isaiah, he walks into the synagogue and he picks up the, the, the scroll of Isaiah. And let me just say, Aussie friends, it's nice to be able to say <laughs> Isaiah and not have to translate oh, to Isaiah, yes. right? So Isaiah, yes. he picks up Isaiah, right? And he begins to read and we know what he says. He says this, he says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me and he has anointed me yeah. to proclaim freedom to the cabinet, freedom to the captives, <laughs> freedom to the captives, to give sight to the blind, to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim this is the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. So even before we talk about anything else, I want to say that I proclaim 2021, the yeah. acceptable year of the Lord's favor, Come on. right? Come on. And so here's the thing that I really wanted to focus on. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to proclaim freedom to the captives, to set at liberty those who are in chains. And so guys, the world are in chains. The ones that are making all of the noise, the ones that are doing all this crazy stuff all around the world, here in America and in the nations. This is the world and we're not fighting against them. We're not going to battle against them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of this dark age. Our, our war is for them to set them free, knowing that the spirit, that same spirit that was on Jesus, because let me tell you, if Jesus is on the inside of you, right? That same Jesus is on the inside of us. That same anointing is upon us. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Let's just all say that wherever you are right now, right there in the room, say the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say it now. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on. I almost heard you all the way from here. And he has anointed me. Come on. Let's just say that yeah. he has anointed, anointed me. me. I want to tell you, friends, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us and he has anointed us to proclaim freedom to the captives and set at liberty those who are in chains. Yeah. So this is what we're, this is the battle we're running to. We're not running to, to do anything else, but to set the captives free. He came yeah. to set the captives free. And so I know that this is a season of harvest and this is a season of revival like we have never seen before. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you, we are not just speaking this and hoping that this is happening. We have already seen this happen. Yeah. You know, the number of miracles that we've seen, even in the last three weeks, have increased exponentially. You know, I think um, we are, we've had two of these broadcasts, two of our, our global services that we do um, in this year so far. And, and both weeks we've seen a ridiculous yeah. outbreak of miracles. And we're, we're talking about lumps disappearing live during broadcasts. We're talking about yeah. um, one lady, we were giving a salvation altar call. We weren't even releasing healing in that moment. Yeah. And in the middle of the altar call and people are getting saved. Yes, Jesus. Yes, yeah. Jesus. They're just typing it in and it's coming out people from all around the world in the middle of that here's this lady my ears just popped open my ear has just popped open bang like that God is moving so I want to tell you we say this to encourage you to excite you to release faith that God is moving in revival and harvest like never before now one of the things that we're really passionate about is this marriage between revival and harvest and I want to make sure just in the last couple of minutes that I'm going to take and, uh, and then the real, the real fire is going to begin right over here. You know, revival is all about harvest. In Acts 1.8, it says this. It says that the, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power. We know that. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. 
In other words, what that is saying, because don't forget, this was in the context of the Great Commission. Jesus has said to everybody. In fact, he said this to who? The apostles. Has it ever occurred to you the apostles? The apostles weren't evangelists. They were apostles, right? And yet he's saying to the apostles, go and preach the gospel to all of creation, right? Be sent out. And so this is, this is being spoken to all of us. The Great Commission is to every single one of us. No matter what you're gifting, no matter, no matter where you come from, no matter what your skill set, whether you're a man, a woman, a child, even a donkey, right? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he says, but after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power. In other words, the Holy Spirit's going to come on you, fill you, anoint you, and then you're going to go out and preach the gospel with boldness, with signs, wonders, and miracles following you here, there, and everywhere, right? So I want to say this, guys. The Holy Spirit is upon us. In this season, we're going to begin to see Pentecostals, charismatic, spirit-filled believers, whatever you would like to call us, right? Those who are filled with the spirit, filled with the fire and the power of God, we're going to see us actually become spirit-filled believers. And this is that season, I believe it with all of my heart. You know, when we talk about all oh, creation, groans and waits for the revealing, the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God, this is that season. Yeah. They're not going to be groaning anymore because all creation is going to see the revealing of the manifestation of the sons of God, the army, the bride of Christ, rising up, knowing who we are and whose we are and running to the battle full of the fire, the power, the oil and the love of God. Don't forget, we're running to the battle, not to fight against the world, but to fight for the world and see them set free, see them delivered, see them healed, see them come into the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on. Amen. I love that. In the few moments that we have with you, I'm just going to skim over some of the things that, that God's been saying to me that tags on and adds to what God's saying to Ben and all of us right now. I know that what we're saying will not be new to you because there's a very clear word from the Lord coming out over 2021. And I believe all the prophets, we've got a hold of the theme. So here's the themes for 2021, attaching to what Ben has already said. Come on. That there is an army that God is raising up in this season and you're it. You're being uh, called in and called up and anointed for 2021. And I want you to say out loud right now, I am anointed for 2021. Now say it out loud. I, I am, am anointed, anointed for, for 2021. 2021. And not only that, you're called into 2021 and you are sent into your sphere of influence for 2021. Here's my verse for 2021. It's very easy to remember. John 20, 21. Come Want on. to hear it? It says this. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. Get a hold of this. God's saying it to us and is using us as prophets to decree this and speak it out over our nation, over our spheres of influence, over desperate, hurting, confused, fearful people. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Prophetic community, prophets, the church, army of God. This is our verse. The Father saying to us, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Us, God sending us into 2021 to be a voice of peace, to be a voice of deliverance, to be a voice of freedom, to be a voice of Jesus speaking into circumstances, to be a voice of resurrection power. We are sent into our sphere of influence. We're always sent into our sphere of influence, but I believe in 2021, we are anointed specifically for this now season, this now set of circumstances, this crazy wild stuff that's going on around us. God has anointed us with solutions and with the answers and with the resurrection power to speak to circumstances and decree them turned around in the name of the Lord, to speak to storms and see them uh, come into peace like never before. You know, another great verse for this season is where it's talking about put on the armor of God, right? 
like never before in this season, as God raises up and mobilizes an army, we need to daily put on specifically the armor of God. You can read about it in Ephesians uh, 6, but there's a specific verse I want to read to you in Ephesians 6, and it says this, For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you may be fully prepared. There's something about the good news in this season and the simpleness of the gospel that the church is coming to a, into a whole new revelation about, literally putting on the shoes of peace. That means when you step into your sphere of influence, your family, your job, your schooling, your place of getting the petrol or you know your groceries, wherever we go, wherever we step into 2021, we have to take the gospel of peace, the simpleness of the gospel with us. And taking the gospel of peace with us means this, when a storm comes up before us, the anointed army of God in this season, we are called in this season like never before to say, storm, you're not allowed here. Chaos, you don't get to rule in this atmosphere you know crises you must come into peace right now because I've turned up on the scene the army of the God of God has res uh, has a uh, resurrection power within us and we have jurisdiction over this atmosphere and you enemy you chaotic atmosphere you don't have jurisdiction in my nation the army of the Lord and the peace of God and resurrection power gets to determine what's going on in my nation and where showing up in force two feet in with our shoes of the gospel on us our gospel our readiness with the peace of the Lord we're showing up and we're determining what's going on in our nation in this season and there's something about the fierceness and the boldness of God that's coming upon the people of God I know you can feel it I know you can feel it. This is a season where the boldness of God is coming upon his people and coming upon his prophets like never before. I want to tell you something. The world needs the prophetic more than they have ever needed the prophetic. I tell all the intimidation to go. I tell all the fear to go. You know, yeah. God's raising up the fear of the Lord in this season. But I want to tell you something, and we all know this. God's also, uh, you know, recalibrating and growing and stretching the prophetic movement. But I want I want to say this to you friends it's the fear of the lord that's going to recalibrate and uh, renew the prophetic movement it's not the fear of the mob and it's not the fear of the loudest crazy voice out there it is the fear of the lord that's going to bring a transformation and increase of power and presence and purity into the prophetic movement not the fear of the mob. And so we just break off all intimidation even now. I know many will have done that already, but get a hold of it in your heart. Yeah. The world needs the prophetic movement and we bless your voice in this season. Right, I want to tell you a couple of things real quick. I had a vision at the end of last year, 2020, and it's going to mark what God is doing in this season. We were in a tent in a revival meeting in California, lockdown, crazy atmosphere, um, you know, people coming out from all over the place because they're desperate for the presence of God and so many people got saved the harvest is ripe right now why did I tell you all that because in the midst of that in the midst of that atmosphere I had a vision and I saw right before I got up to speak God opened my eyes and I instantly saw angels all around the tent and these angels had a clipboard and a pen and I knew instantly these angels were in the room to record and take note of people's yes for Jesus, but not just a yes for Jesus. They were taking note of a, a yes to a costly yes for Jesus and joining the army of God in 2021. And these angels were at the ready and I saw them and I get emotional every time I think about it because I knew God was taking note of our response to sign up and be two feet in for the response of God in this hour. And God is anointing his people like never before in this season. He's calling us and mobilizing a literal army of God. And when we use army language, it's to describe the determination and the fierceness of our faith in this season. And the, uh, the uh, 
I guess the love, the fierce love that we're going to carry in this season, it's not like Ben said, it's not to attack people, it's to release the love of God with such a determination and such a persevering faith in this season. But I saw these angels standing, ready to take note of our costly yes for this season. And God is doubling down because the enemy's been doubling down. And God is doubling down to anoint his people in this season like never before to go out and to be sent out into our sphere of influence and release revival, bring the harvest in and release resurrection power. And all those things are key because they are things that God's highlighting and increasing in this season. You know, uh, Ezekiel 44.4, the glory is going to increase in this season. So get ready. It's going to increase even as we speak right now. The glory is increasing. Ezekiel 44.4, it says this, I looked and I saw the glory of the Lord enter the temple and I fell face down. The fall face down, weighty glory is coming upon the prophetic movement like never before. It's coming upon the church like never before. The glory is going to increase. And in the glory, is found the prophetic creative solutions that we are crying out for and that our nations are crying out for. The glory is increasing. The weight of the Lord is increasing. The fire of God is increasing. The fear of the Lord is increasing. And the prophetic now solutions are increasing. And God is raising up a new salvation army. And he's mobilizing a new salvation army. And I'm going to be quick, but this is a word for you to grab a hold of. When I saw these angels drop a phrase, dropped in my spirit and I heard the Lord say I am raising up a new salvation army now I am not uh, discounting the salvation army which actually I grew up in they're an incredible church an incredible movement that's not what I'm talking about I heard the Lord say I am raising up a new salvation army God is going to mobilize the church like never before and the prophets are going to lead the charge the prophets will lead the charge because God is mobilizing his people to reach the light like never before. Why? Because the lost like never before are desperate for God to move in their lives. You know, I want you to think about something and all the craziness of this season, friends. Imagine not knowing Jesus right now. Imagine it. How scary would that be? Imagine not having God and imagine not having Jesus in our lives right now. Well, that is why the harvest is not just ripe right now. But they are desperate for God, whether they can put it into words or not. And we've often been saying, and I speak it over 2021, that the harvest is not just ripe, it's desperate. God has readied the harvest right now. God has readied the people around us in our sphere of influence, and they're desperate for God to move. And I want to say this, there are no greater evangelists than prophetic people. You know why? Because as prophetic people, we know how to speak straight to the heart of what's going on. We know how to decree the heart of God over people, over cities, and over nations. And that prepares people's hearts to receive the love of God and to receive salvation. Amen. And so I want to decree over 2021 that there is a merging together of an evangelism anointing and a prophetic anointing. And we are going to see souls saved like never before because the harvest is not just ripe it's desperate and God is raising up a new salvation army and we are going to see revival break out in our nation we are going to see souls saved like never before and God is going to use you friend to be part of the solution in this season and see souls won revival break out resurrection power restored back to God's people I mean real resurrection happening like never before in our midst. I mean cities turning around. I mean economic solutions breaking out and turning around economies. I mean fresh ideas that break open open businesses and finances in people's lives and resurrection power into impossible medical situations. We are going to see healings break out and miracle solutions and Lazarus style comebacks like never before. And so get 
ready, church, because we are going to lead the charge. You know, I love that the Bible says that we are the head and not the tail. That's in Deuteronomy 28, 13. Deuteronomy 28, 13 talks about us being the head and not the tail. That means that we lead the charge, my prophetic friends. We speak out what God is saying. Yes, there's many voices, but we speak out what God is saying. The enemy does not get to determine what Australia looks like in this season. The media does not get to determine what Australia looks like in this season. The, uh, the voices, the loudest voices, the loudest influences do not get to determine the future of Australia in this season. The voice of the Lord the Bible and the prophetic anointed courage of the people of God gets to speak out and contend and determine what the future of Australia looks like in this season. Amen. I want to bless each and every one of your voices right now. I want to speak a boldness and a courage over you. Friends, in this season, like never before, God is raising up an unapologetic faith in the prophetic community. Come on. God's raising up shameless boldness. I want to say this. There are uh, breakthroughs in 2021 that are reserved for the persevering church and the persevering prophet. Just like the woman who uh, knocked all night. Remember the parable of that? She knocked all night to the judge for what she wanted. And the judge, even though he was an unjust judge, gave her what she wanted simply because she didn't stop asking. Prophets, don't stop asking in this season. There is a shameless boldness to knock Ask and persevere in this season. There's a resolute anointed courage that's coming upon us to push through for what God is saying in this season. There's an uncontained fire that's going to burn up the works of the enemy and release the glory of the Lord in this season. We're going to see souls and deliverance like never before. One last thing I want to say. It's time to strike again. It's time to strike the ground again. Yeah. I love the story in uh, 2 Samuel 13 where it talks about, uh, you know, Elijah, Elisha coming and telling uh, the king it's time to strike again. Two things in closing I want to say to you, church, and it's this. The prophet came to the king in impossible circumstances. It was looking like, you know, there was certain defeat that, you know, the people were fearful. The king didn't have a way ahead. And the prophet said to him, open the window and shoot an arrow out the window. Let me say this. There is a rhema open window for the word of the Lord to be shot out over our nations right now. There is a window of opportunity for the gospel, for revival, and for harvest, for souls right now. Now that arrow, the prophet said, the arrow is called uh, the Lord's arrow of victory. The word of the Lord to us right now is there is victory church, but recognize there is an open window and speak that victory out over your sphere of influence, over your families, over your nations, over your finances, over what God is saying. Recognize that there is an open Kairos moment for revival and for harvest and for deliverance in this season, for resurrection power and shoot out our prophetic words like never before. Then he said, strike the ground. Now, you will notice when you read this story that uh, the prophet never said how many times to strike the ground. And he got annoyed with the king because he stopped after a few times and didn't keep persevering and striking the ground. Here's my word for us in 2021. God's raising up and mobilizing an army of God. And he is giving us anointed courage and perseverance to keep going. And God is saying, strike the ground and 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 strike the ground because the Lord has given us the Lord's arrow of victory, the Lord's word of victory. But he's saying, don't stop, don't quit, don't turn back, don't silence yourself, don't remove yourself from what God is doing. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's revival and harvest season and the prophetic movement is needed yeah. like never before to speak out what the Lord is saying, that this is revival and harvest season and there's a window of opportunity open right now. So strike the ground. Wow. 
Hey, our time's gone, so we want to just pray for you really quickly. We love you so much. And so, God, we just thank you for everybody, for every person, for every man, for every woman, for every child listening. We're praying for you right now, friend. We're praying for the church. We're praying for Australia. We just release the anointing of the Holy Spirit, a fresh wave of anointing upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And even as I see the waves crashing back and forth from one side of Australia to the other, spilling out into the, the ocean and literally changing the color of the sea and affecting the nation of the earth. God, we just bless all that you're doing in the great Southland of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus name. Yeah. Amen. And we just speak an anointed boldness over you. We just break off any shackles around your voice right now. We bless your voice in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that we are anointed and sent into our sphere of influence in 2021 to release victory to deliver the captives and to see a harvest like we've never seen before. Be Come encouraged, on. our friends. Be encouraged. <laughs> so exciting. Yeah. So Australian Prophetic Council, Australian Prophetic Summit, Australia, we love you. We yeah. bless you. Ha! In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.